Hi everyone. Okay, so in this video I will be demonstrating how to find the equilibrium for the 4 bed tree that is on the screen right now. As I explained in the previous video, in order to find an equilibrium you need to define one of the two players as being optimal, and with that I mean you should let that player use the max exploit tool. Then you come up with a hypothesis of what you think the other player's optimal play should look like. Then you use a script to try out many, many configurations of that hypothesis. And in the end you pick the configuration that performed best versus the optimal player. And whatever configuration you end up with is the one that is closest to the true equilibrium. So first in our tree we need to pick an optimal player. Now it shouldn't matter which player you pick here, you should always end up with the same equilibrium. For our example I'll just pick Big Blind as the player who is optimal, meaning that he is the one who gets to use the max exploit tool. However, should you have a different, more complicated tree, the smartest thing to do is to always define the player with the most complicated decisions as the one who is optimal. In that way it will be a lot easier to come up with a hypothesis for the other player's strategy. Ok, so given that Big Blind is optimal, we'll be wanting the very small blind's counter strategy by focusing on his ranges here and here. I'll assign checkpoints 1 and 2 to those conditions. And we will be wanting to measure small blind's EV here. I'll just make that checkpoint 3. And when we want to apply the max exploit tool to Big Blind, the software will need to know which player to pick. For that, just assign a checkpoint to any of Big Blind's decisions. Any which one of them will do. I'll just assign checkpoint 4 to this decision. Ok, so let's now write our script that varies all of Small Blind's top percentages from 5% to 100% with a step of 5. I'll just briefly go over how to do that, but if you want to see how to create these loops in more detail, I'd like to refer you to the previous videos on scripting, instead of repeating everything. So first we'll set up a loop that varies variable 1 from 5 to 100 with a step of 5. I'll just set that up and skip here. Ok, and there it is. We initialize variable 1 at 5, then we increase it by 5, and as long as it's 100 or below, we go back to line 2. Ok, now I'll add a subloop that varies small blinds 4 bed frequency. For that I'll use variable 2. Again I'll just skip here. Ok, so here we have our subloop. Every time we go through a loop for variable 1, we reset variable 2 to 5, increase it by 5, and go back to line 3 as long as variable 2 is at most variable 1. Please note that I'm not varying variable 2 from 5 to 100, but from 5 to variable 1. And that's because it's pointless to look at 4 bed frequencies that are greater than the open race frequency. After all, anything beyond the open race frequency is no longer available in small blind range at the time of the 4 bed decision. Ok, and now I'll set up the part of the script where we make small blind perform the desired races, after which we make big blind react optimally. I'll just set it up and skip here. Ok, so for every run through each configuration of variables 1 and 2, we'll need to reset the shoving conditions to all hands in location 1 and 2, perform an EV run to get the EVs for that setup, filter for small blinds variable 2% at the last location in the tree, then another EV run, and then filter for small blinds top variable 1% in his first decision in the tree. And after we have set up small blinds open race and 4 bed configuration, we make big blind react optimally at location 4. And now all we need to do is store the EV for this configuration. Now our 2D graph commands won't suffice here, since we're not going over all values for variable 2 for each loop. To solve this, instead I'll use these commands for storing and loading trees. I'll just say if get EV at location 3, which is the EV for small blind strategy, is greater than the best value we found so far, store the tree in temporary tree number, I'll just make that number 8, but any number will do, and I'll close with and if. 
and we'll still need an additional variable to keep track of the best value we found so far. For that I'll introduce variable number 3. I'll first initialize it at the start of the script at 0. And since I just added it at the start of the script at line 1, I'll just correct the go to commands so they don't go to line 3 but line 4 and line 3. And if the EV for small blind strategy is greater than variable number 3, then we store that value in variable number 3. Okay, that should do it. Oh, one more thing. At the end of the script, we should load our best performing tree back to the screen. And we store that tree in temporary tree number 8. Okay, let's run the script. I'll just close the editor. And run script. And I'll just skip here. And there we are. This is the best configuration that we came across. And apparently small blind should raise the top 70% of hands and four bet the 50% of his strongest hands in case big blind three bets. And if I mouse over the four bet range, uh, let me just close this window here. We see that almost all of small blinds hands are plus EV, which is what you would expect in an equilibrium. After all, in an equilibrium, all hands for both players should be plus EV. Now the fact that not all of small blinds hands are plus EV is due to the fact that this is not the equilibrium, we're just very close to it. Okay, and here's big blinds 3 bets and call condition. All the hands here are plus EV as well, which is not too surprising since he is the player who had access to the max exploit tool. And finally, here's small blinds open race condition. The reason for its weird makeup is that it is composed of the 4 bet range, which is for value, and on the other hand bluffs, which small blind will fold if big blind 3 bets. The composition of this bluffing range in an equilibrium is typically determined by card removal effects, and as a result of that these ranges can get pretty weird. In fact I've had bluffing ranges that are a lot weirder than this. Ok, anyhow, all the hands are plus EV here as well, which is a strong indication that we're near the equilibrium. Now once again, this is not the equilibrium, we're just very close to it. If you want to get closer, then you might want to run the script again, but then with smaller steps in the general area around this configuration. Should you want to double check your solution, you can repeat the entire process, but then with small blind instead of big blind being the player who has access to the max exploit tool. The equilibrium you arrive at should be the same. If I'd want to change our script for this, then all I'd have to do is set location 1 here, and set location 2 here, and set location 4 at any of small blinds decisions. And now the script will go over all configurations for big blind, after which small blind gets to react optimally. There's two more tiny changes that need to be made in the script itself though. Let's go back to the script. Here, we should store the tree every time we come across a worse EV. This is because it's big blind's goal to minimize rather than maximize small blind's EV. And variable 3 should not be initialized at 0, but at some random high value. I'll just pick 999. Otherwise, the if statement would never find a worse EV since we already started out at 0. Ok, that's it, let's run this again. And I'll just skip here. And there we are. In our previous equilibrium, small blinds EV ended up being $2.18. And in our new equilibrium, with an optimal big blind, the EV for small blind strategy is $2.21, which makes these solutions really close to each other. And also, all the raising frequencies are again very close to the setup where big blind was optimal. Okay, that should be enough for this video.